In this video, you'll be solving an example for the method of superposition section. I'll give you a second to pause and read through the question on your own before we get started. Alright, so the W12 by 45 simply support a steel beam is subjected to a moment at point A and a point load at point C. The question is asking us to figure out the deflection at C through the method of superposition. We're told that E is equal to 29,000 KSI and we're also told that I is equal to 350 inches to the power of 4. The value for I was obtained from the AISC manual, where the acronym stands for American Institute of Construction. Also note, we can find the value for I in Appendix C of your textbook. I'll begin solving the problem on the following slide. Alright, so there are currently two loads acting on the beam. The first is a 12 kip point load at point C and the second is a 50 kip feet moment at point A. As for the superposition method, we'll have to draw the free body diagram for each component such that we're able to utilize the deflection tables. Alright, so we'll start with the first load, and here's the corresponding free body diagram. Before we draw the elastic curve, note that the deflection is zero at the fixed and roller supports. So if we apply the point load at point C, the corresponding elastic curve will look like this. As per the question, we're solving for the vertical deflection at C, so the deflection for this component was labeled as VC1. Now I'll move on to the second load. The free body diagram will look like this. If you apply the moment at point A, the elastic curve will look like this. And we'll label the deflection at point C as VC2. In order to obtain the overall deflection, we'll have to use deflection tables to solve for the deflection for each component. After that, we'll be able to sum the components to solve for the overall deflection at point C. On the following slide, we'll take a look at the deflection tables. On this slide, we'll use the free body diagram from the previous slide to figure out what equations we'll need to solve for the deflection at point C. Alright, so here are the free body diagrams, and here are the corresponding beams on the table. Let's start with the first load. For this particular case, the maximum deflection will occur at the midspan of the beam which is where point C is located, so we can use this formula here. Meanwhile, for the second load, the maximum deflection occurs when x is equal to 0.5774 times L, where L represents the total length of the beam. But we need to solve for the deflection when x is equal to half of L, and so we'll have to use this formula instead. On the following slide, I'll begin solving for the deflection for each component. On this slide, We'll solve for the deflection produced by the first load. I've included the equations we'll be using along with the corresponding values right under the diagram. So if you take the deflection equation and plug in the corresponding values, we'll end up with negative 0.588 inches, or in other words, a deflection of 0.588 inches in the downwards direction. And this is the deflection produced by the first load. On the following slide, we'll solve for the deflection produced by the second load. On this slide, we'll solve for the deflection produced by the second load, along with the overall deflection of the beam. Just as before, I've also included the equations we'll be using along with the corresponding values below. For this component, x is equal to L over 2, which is equal to 144 inches. Now if we sub the corresponding values into the equation, we'll end up with 0 0.306 inches in the downwards direction. Now that we have the vertical deflection for the second load, we now have everything we need to solve for the overall deflection. If we sum the vertical deflection produced by both loads, we'll end up with 0 0.894 inches in the downwards direction. And this is the final answer for the problem. And this concludes the video for the example regarding the method of superposition section. In the following video, we'll begin talking about the next unit regarding design concepts.